interrupt regular transmissions to bring you this special programme. The Airfix 124th Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9 has arrived. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Modelcraft Bench. Today we have a very special brand new release for you. Arrived just today, direct from Airfix, from a pre-order. The new tool, Mark 9 Spitfire and 124th scale. And what a beauty it looks like it's going to be. So this will just be a quick look review. I think a quick snip would end up being two hours long. Uh, and I am going to do a build series on this, so you'll see it there. Uh, this is the box. It is, shows hands, not massive. It's surprisingly small for what it lies within. If you think back to the original Mark 1 Spitfire and the re-releases re thereof, the box is hugely long, quite wide. The um, 124th Typhoon, again, it's got to be 30% bigger than this. It is reasonably large, obviously, and quite deep. Uh, on the sides, some pictures, some info. On this side, <coughs> colour scheme info. Four flying hours. It's quite, it's quite deep, and it is quite sturdy. So if we just quickly list the lid, because there's something a little bit different in here. I don't know if it's a real change of direction or what, but it's interesting. Get the lid off. Paper. So the wing, the wing parts aren't in bags. They've just got pieces of paper, quite nice paper actually, um, <clears throat> around them just to stop them chafing against each other. I can lift that piece, you've got, you've got the others in there, the fuse largest down below. But anyhow, I shall get my professional looking base out and we'll go through the sprues and see what we get inside this magnificent new release from Airfix. All right then, I will go through the sprues as they come out of the box. This is very much uh, a first look. I did have a very, very quick look before I went on camera, but not by any means a proper one. Um, and some of these parts will be a bit large to fit under the view of the camera, but uh, we'll deal with that. So here we go then. The first one out is the one piece molded lower wing part. As you can see, there are multiple apertures for things, a machine gun, um, fixtures, the radiators and the undercarriage and as a result of that is quite flexible. It is moulded with dihedral already and we do have a little bit of sort of plastic texture on the surface but also I don't know, let's see if we can see it we do have some representation of the surface being rippled and particularly with older aircraft like this that were very much the wing skins were very much aluminium skins over a framework even when new and even when freshly rebuilt they're quite rippled and this surface depicts that quite well actually I think it should look really nice when painted. Potentially quite hard to pick up with the camera, but it's there for sure. All of this rivet and fastener detail is recessed with the exception of the hinges on the on the inspection panels in the centre area here. <clears throat> and the wing fairings are, are raised up as well, which they should be. It's It's really nicely done. Indeed. Um, there is the typical standard slight texture to the surface that you get with Airfix kits and then on the inside some all the ejector pin marks where you're not going to see them but you can see we're going to have a spar here. I think too much to note there and that's sprue B so I'll put that to one side and the next one out is perhaps unsurprisingly the upper surfaces and aforementioned spar which is almost full span actually again these have cutouts so 
the machine gun installations, the cannon bay, and actually these little windows here, which allow the flap linkages to move, but also act as a visual indicator for the pilot that the flaps are deployed. And again, that's potentially even less obvious, but we've got that rippled effect throughout, along with a bit of sink marks along the front edge of the ailerons, which is quite common on Spitfire kits, actually. This surface is slightly more matte than the underside, so that texture is going to be even less easy to see as it is there. Flip them over. We've got some flat false work detail here and the beginnings of some undercarriage bay. So that's the structural ribs that run across the top of the undercarriage bay there. Again, very nicely done. And again, that typical airfix texture to the plastic. It's not excessive though, it's not excessive. Next up, a pair of fuselage halves. Well, the back end anyway. Uh, so straight away, Spitfire people are going to realise that there are options for differences here. Um, by separating this area under the tail, it gives Airfix the, op the, the the it makes it easier for Airfix to potentially release something like a Mark 16 version or a Mark 8 potentially with a sorry a Mark 8 with a retracting tail wheel. Cutting it off at the firewall again gives you options with with changing out the front end should you wish to. Again, note we've got some rippling and bulging of panels here and there, and it isn't consistent across both halves of the fuselage either. I don't know whether this is based on scanning or photographs of a real one or if the designers just decided where they wanted to put them. But the, the same panels aren't, aren't rippled on each side. Though it's different from one side to the other. Again, we've got that nice raised edge for the wing fairing there. And a nice raised edge for the armour plate that covers the fuel tank area. On the inside, virtual full frame detail or very basic but it's there um, and the beginnings of some of the detail for the cockpit area as well again very competent indeed the surface detail itself is really it's quite it's relatively fine I think with larger parts like this you can kind of get away with big detail and it doesn't look stupid but they've not gone down that route it is still quite fine which is nice and there's things there that that often you don't see on kits like the, the mountings for the aerials and the little data marks and things like that this here this little lump at the front here some Spitfire kits do have it but that's actually a, there's another one there and another one there they're little data plates which are on the real aircraft are, are brass and unpainted and that's to help with rigging when you put the thing together We have a tiny separate sprue, which is just the top cowling. Slight niggle. So this is one of my pet hates to be honest, so I'm bound to pick up on it. This depiction of quarter turn fasteners, camlock fasteners, Zeus fasteners to use a trade name, as raised circles, it, it just it irritates me beyond belief. Um because it's just wrong honestly. It's easy enough to fix. Um but it's, it's an, it annoys me. We do have a mould seam along the top of the Merlin bump too, but that will be very, very easy. Just give it a little scrape and sand it out. I'll look at the transparencies later. There we've got some bags, just traditional bags. Let's get that off. I should point out actually, maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to, that I haven't really seen this kit before now. I I was at Duxford in the summer at the um, Battle of Britain Air Show and Airfix were there with one of these on display, but where they set themselves up in the same uh, part of the museum as, where, as the Victories, it was being reassembled at the time, the lighting was really poor and my eyesight is also quite poor. <laughs> so I really couldn't 
get a good feel for what for for the parts from from that one quick viewing so this is it's quite nice to finally be able to see it properly so this one is <coughs> sprue f foxtrot lots and lots of small parts i can see pieces of wheel bay there um cannon ammunitions a lot of wing ribs 50 cows and cannons mostly so have a look at the ribs and then packed in with that one in the same bag of sprue G slightly more recognisable parts here obviously flying controls control surfaces there's a pair of ailerons there it's like a flap we've got the um, radiator housings there in multiple pieces cannon barrels all sorts radiator faces are there and wing tips this is the standard span wing tip I'll give you a close-up of this cannon cannon panel I'd like I like the way they've done the fastener detail on that and then the radiator faces very consistent surface detail throughout some of the scribing some of the panel lines are maybe a touch heavy but being such a large model does does, uh, does help get away with that <coughs> relatively large next then unceremonious Christmas style unwrapping there Sprue E okay wheels and tyres undercarriage doors undercarriage legs firewall is it frame 5 on the Spitfire is that too geeky there's a jig there that's interesting Some pieces to uh, fill in at the tail Again, it's all nicely done. Crisp and clean. All sorts of bits and bobs there. Cockpit doors as well and the aerial. I assume we get a retracted undercarriage option. We've got an undercarriage leg there with no details on it. And three different wheel options so the covered wheel the four spoke and the five spoke and there's your tail wheel there moving on sprue delta d um i like these tabs this is something i first saw in um, a guns uh sorry a gundam kit bandai with the tab with the stenciled out letters it's much easier to find the sprue you need in the box when they're done like that clearly this is cockpit detail or internal detail so that's the back of the firewall or the front of the cockpit if you like instrument panel frames sidewall detail and then there's got a separate floor as well so uh, aircraft of this era mostly didn't really have a cockpit floor as such that is technically the bottom of the fuselage rather than a cockpit floor I've managed to move my backdrop around haven't I? I've been too excited here see the seat itself is in multiple parts here we've got the sides and there's the base and the back with a moulded in cushion which does have some texture moulded onto it and a super nice touch over here plastic moulded seat belts see what we think about those when it comes to it it's the undercarriage handle complete with its pipe work um, and the throttle quadrant there again it's all it's all just really nicely done it's not um, the finest or the most detailed stuff you're ever going to see but it's certainly perfectly serviceable 
we're getting down to the bottom so next ones I keep saying so I'll stop that <clears throat> it's bouquet engine stuff look at this a Merlin engine this does look lovely let's have some some more juicy close-ups so cylinder banks there and the crankcases rocker covers the sump the reduction gearbox area supercharger is your engine bearers some of the cooling pipes magnetos with the ignition wire conduits carburetor intake it's all good stuff i love this and there's the oil tank that resides underneath the nose of the engine i think you'll agree this is all lovely stuff and compared to the original 70s 24 scale spitfire it's a uh, it's light years different but i suppose it should be We've moved on a bit haven't we so moving on i said so again moving on to sprue h now um tail feathers We've got early and late or should i say late and later to options for the actual um tail planes and elevators there and we also have options for the rudder the the sort of enlarged slightly greater area with version with the pointy tip there or the standard one separate elevators obviously and also separate trim tabs so here the noisy reverser coming down the street we don't have surface texture stress skin effect panting on the tail planes but we've got that same restrained and really crisp surface detail and I'm really pleased to see and it seems to consistent to me with Airfix that they, they don't overdo fabric stuff uh, it's become almost a fashion or a trend I think nowadays or of late that um, you have to have rib tapes that could trip an elephant um, they are not present here these actually look very subtle and actually much more like they should and the last sprue apart from the transparencies here we go I wonder if I should take them out of the bags before I start but then you'll think I've already looked at it sprue L L for last so what we've got here engine panels or sort of cowlings there is options for the lower cowls uh, they're considerably more common long intake with the a shorter version there this is the framework that the cowling panels actually attach to side panels there and propeller propeller blades We've got a separate section at the root there so they're two parts each and then the hub and the spinner with the back plate assembly i keep saying it but just really competent it's it it's not going to blow you away this but at the same time it is absolutely lovely and, and i honestly think probably better than most would expect from airfix lovely stuff but we have got these stupid raised circles for the fasteners again final plastic parts i'll take these out with a knife so i can reuse the bag for this one transparencies there's one thing i think airfix undeniably are good at it's transparencies these are very slightly um chafed but not to any degree that's unrecoverable by any means so we've got two different sliding portions of canopy there i will assume it's an open one and a closed one going a little bit old school transparent instrument panels windscreen and, and the aft part there some landing light lenses 
short span wing tip smouldered as one piece within clear so you've got the, the navigation lights that are integral to it you've got the spare light bulb holder for the cockpit gun sight parts and various nav and eye dent lights and here's a rear view mirror here as well across the board these are very very clear there is a little bit of distortion in this one in particular but very clear and very very shiny the frames are raised from well actually these are quite flush which that's really nice these frames are raised but not clunky yeah really lovely I'll give you a close up of the main windscreen and then the canopy this one does have a mould line but it's a very very faint one and will be very easy to clean up I can't see a mould line in this one close up on that one as well beautifully done okay and in the bottom of the box now we're down there we've got as you might expect instructions and decals also as you probably wouldn't expect the box is embossed it's a really cool feature the bottom of the box has an embossed airfix logo in it how nice is that completely unnecessary of course but it's nice pretty large sheet as you'd expect because it's some fairly large markings to go on it we'll look at the uh, marking options in a moment as usual it's absolutely gorgeous airfix decals are really really good in my opinion um, got a bunch of stencils at the top including internal stencils and instrument panel dials as separate decals and that might that might be a first in a in a in a, in a sort of standard release actually I can't remember seeing a kit personally that had separate dial decals for the instrument panel all fully legible if you look closely enough and then your na national markings and, and serials and things they are quite glossy but not excessively so the carrier film is trimmed extremely closely the sky colour looks good yeah really really nice looking sheet that it's a pity I won't be using it Then the instructions. Let's first look at it's it's pretty much a book. This is a this is a magazine, and then you have three fold out glossy uh, paint scheme instructions. So let's find a. Go through them in order because we like order. Scheme A, Mark 9C, ML214, flown by squadron leader Johnny Plagis, who I believe was Greek, with number 126 squadron from Royal Air Force, Harabir in Devon, England, July 1944, with options for June and December 1944. And as you can see, there are multiple scrap views here showing various little differences and a super nice touch is measurements so invasion stripes were meant to be painted on to a standard which was given out uh, so nominally they should be a certain size and the decal de designer has been thoughtful enough to let you know what size that translates to in scale so the wing bands approximately 52 millimeters in total 10 and a half mil per stripe the sky recognition band 19 millimeters and even the yellow propeller tips 4.2 combo color call outs as you'd expect quite comprehensive and very nicely done scheme b en398 flown by flight lieutenant ian kelty 402 squadron city of winnipeg royal air force kenley in surrey 
England, March 1943. I believe I'm right in saying that that's a Canadian squadron. Not sure. I'm shooting from the hip there. <laughs> we don't. We've again got the measurements there where necessary, and this one's got Popeye on it on the front there. Steam C, Charlie. Very very famous aircraft, EN three nine eight. Flown by James Edgar brackets Johnny Johnson, four hundred two Squadron, City of Winnipeg. Royal Air Force, Kenley, Surrey, England, summer 43. This is JEJ, -E good old JEJ, -E very bog standard day fighter scheme of the time with a little green maple leaf on the nose. <coughs> scheme D, which I do believe if I was going to use a kit scheme, I probably would use this one. This is an aircraft flown by Captain Garth Jared, commanding officer of the 309th Fighter Squadron, 31st Fighter Group. US Army Air Force Italy December 43 do like these this one's called Eleanor and it's got a little duck I think that is let me look at the sheet again it's a sort of a Donald Duck nose art and a couple of mission markings red spinners nice so this is an interesting one because you've got the opportunity for some fairly extensive weathering, overpainting of standard markings and all sorts of stuff. Last but not least, French. I don't want to embarrass myself by trying to read that out to be to be honest with you. Let's just say France, 1945. <laughs> Again, this is a really nice one for giving opportunity for overpainting, wear and tear, um, artistic interpretation of aircraft colour standards etc. <laughs> um, as this would have been, a, I presume, an ex-RAF aircraft that was handed down to the French. Um, but love the yellow markings on it and it's called Curieux and it's got some cat size on the nose which is quite cute. Then on the reverse of this you have your stencil data placement very large clear and easy to follow beautifully done I have to say so let's look at that flipping instruction book it's literally a magazine you'd probably pay a five or four in WH Smith's decent quality paper got a bit of history there with some specs of the real thing Colour chart showing all the paint colours specified for the model by Airfix. They are, of course, Humbrol products, um, which I don't use. But hmm. That's uh, some info in different languages, assembly icons, or standard stuff. Then, a departure. Position of cockpit decals. How nice is this? Separate dial decals. Decals for the... Uh, controls throughout the cockpit uh, and indeed the door beautiful love that and then construction itself uh, and this follows the now, now very well established airfix way of doing things with the sort of shaded pictures and the coloured bits showing what you're working with at each stage these injection molded seat belts are nice um I have come up against those before, or I should say I've seen them before. Uh, I think it was a fine fine molds used to sell them as an aftermarket accessory actually, but I don't know, even in this scale they might be a little bit heavy, we'll see. Just about to see the whole thing there. So you're building it up off, off this false floor. It does have some slight little bits of colour here and there, like this area at Sam 56, which I think is gunmetal silver uh, the rear part of the fuselage inside should be aluminium painted on these um, so there's some slight indications of color throughout but the the paint numbers are shown everywhere all good stuff 
once you get to a certain point add, adding the sidewall so it's, it looks like it's going to build up to a sort of an assembly that will just slot into the fuselage when it's done and I actually haven't looked through these so that is a guess um, yeah continuing with all of that very comprehensive colour call outs everywhere here I like that then we're getting on to the actual fuselage halves and adding these separate panels as you can see there's just the small slot there for the fixed tail wheel but it would be very easy to provide different parts to have the retractable tail wheel that jig we saw on the sprues is here for cutting if we want to, to fit the canopy in the closed position so obviously the assumption is that the vast majority of models want to have it in the open position so you don't fix this to the model simply put it in place maybe tape it down and that shows you which part to cut out nice touch you don't want to be wrecking your brand new super kit by doing that wrong and as you say we've built up this sort of cockpit egg which then just fits into the fuselage this is uh, similar to Tamiya carry on with that battery nice so the internal detail does go back a fair way probably further than you'll really be able to see as far as that but the fuel cap is a separate part which will sort of slip into position there saves you having to try and sort out a seam across some recessed detail you can't get to we're building up all the tail feathers there so what's fitted the elevators will interlock can't quite see that far down so if you have them drooped at all they should droop the same amount it's saying not to glue these trim tabs do have little uh, pegs that sit into small recesses so in theory they're movable but they're very tiny pegs that probably break pretty easily personally I would glue them it's not like trim tabs flip loosely in the breeze anyway so and we're on to sort of main wing construction so there are a couple of sort of trailing edge spars here to go in where the flap into the flap area and then this main spar straight away you're putting uh, some undercarriage locations onto that and then we simply go along building up the wing almost a bit like a real one in reverse because we're starting from the skin and working inwards but stick the spar down and then there's a bunch of ribs to go on again the painting instructions are very thorough there's notes throughout as well here the designers noting to make sure that the the spar is properly glued all the way along and it's holding the wing straight so you, you're not introducing any buckles by not having it glued properly and it keeps coming <laughs> it's a big model you got spars then all the way out to the end of the machine gun base so technically uh, ribs sorry they're not there to help the wing hold its shape they're there to provide sort of detail to the sides of the um, various armament bays some representations of the probably the gun heating pipes there and then adding the armament itself be interested to see how well these panels fit it'd be nice if you could build this detail in and do a nice job of it but still have these panels remove it removable or fittable <laughs> that's not a word I know um, because I like I don't, I don't really like a lot of open panels on a finished model but it's nice to be able to see the detail if you want to and we finally get to stage 97 of the instructions and we introduce the back half of the fuselage to the lower half of the wing this is another thing airfix of are doing a lot now where you're not producing a completed wing and fitting it to the you actually fit the upper parts of the wings afterwards as shown there there's your radiators going together radiator and oil cooler combo
and then we move on to the engine it does tell you there that if you do not wish to have the engine panels open or if you wish to fit all of the engine panels you don't have to build the whole engine it should go without saying but it tells you which steps to carry out if you only want to end up like this I'm not sure if that means you can't fit the cowlings with the full engine but then it you should be able to because it says there There you are putting together those panels as a shell and then putting that over the shell of the engine and here we are building the engine itself quite a lot of stages just to do that goodness we've even got coolant pipe work and stuff included Showing your choice of the lower cowling with the carburetor intakes, the longer one, which was the normal one, I think it was so called a bouquet. So instead of having a separate tropical intake on the late Mark Spitfires, they simply had a sort of universal intake, which was this one, which already was semi tropicalized, and then you had a short one if you really didn't need that. You see the filter underneath. The exhaust tubs are made out of separate parts as well to provide a hollow end there and you fit them one by one. Here we are attaching the flaps. The flaps on the Spitfire, it doesn't note, note that fact here, it doesn't look like. The flaps on the Spitfire only have two positions and that is up or down and the down position is pretty much 90 degrees to the wing surface, that's quite extreme. Um, and it was not normal for them to be left in the open position after use. They are quite flimsy and easy to damage so they tended to be raised as soon as possible after the aircraft landed. I'm fitting the rest of the control surfaces there and some cannons at the bottom. And then moving on to the undercarriage, there is a raised undercarriage option there using that sort of basic leg just as something to hang everything on. And then the extended option there with your different wheel types. What's that, Sam? We fit the tail leg there, the tail wheel. And then we move back to the cockpit area, which we haven't actually fit the transparencies yet. Uh, so we pop the gun sight in there and we've got two got both gun sight options, the sort of early reflector gun sight and the later one there. <clears throat> Moving on to your aerial and nav lights and then actually fitting the transparencies themselves. So yeah, I was correct, that is an open or closed canopy rather than a... Um, um, okay, I'm wrong. I'm actually wrong. I'm going to read the note. Note. It is not possible to make the true bold shape of the Spitfire canopy without having a seam line through the centre. It should be possible to polish out the seam line from X22, but if preferred we have included an alternative canopy which is less bulged but has no seam line. Well that's nice. So if you don't have the confidence to attack that seam line and polish it out, there's a slightly less bulged option to use instead. And then the very back page we fit the propeller. So 244 steps later we have a completed model. Wow, what an instruction booklet that is, it's awesome. I think you'll agree. Now, as an addendum, there's that now again. At no extra charge, I'm going to give you this top tip here. If, uh, like me, you're a Spitfire enthusiast, I'm by no means an expert, don't claim to be, uh, but 
I have a, a, a great passion for the aircraft, as many do. If you want to build a great Mark IX model, you cannot get a better reference than this book here. So this, this is the Paul Monforton book, Spitfire, Mark IX and 16 engineered, and it is fantastic. I won't go page by page. I don't even know truthfully if this book is still available, and if it is, it is not cheap at all. But this is the kind of stuff you get. Close-up pictures, engineering drawings, dimensions, all the areas you could possibly want. What does the area beneath the elevator look like? Well, it looks like that. It's absolutely fantastic. All of these drawings are scaled by the way and it does tell you what, this is one sixth scale so you can even use these to, to, to measure to get stuff sorted if you, if you wish to and somewhere it's a lot of pictures from a lot of angles I mean clearly these are of surviving airframes and not necessarily representative of a wartime aircraft you have to make that call yourself but the airframe itself obviously isn't any different. Different exhaust styles, spinners, and here, actual rivet pictures. So rivet counters may rejoice because you can indeed actually count the rivets here and check that the kit has them in the right places, even in the right amounts, like so. craziness so yeah there's so much information in this book there's some more rivet counting there it tells you what size the rivets are what type the rivets are it tells you what the skin gauge is the thicknesses of the skin panels so if you're really excited about being accurate you can replicate where the overlapping skin panels are with the correct thickness of overlap plating thicknesses it, it's a fantastic reference book it is not bedtime reading by any means but to build a model spitfire you really cannot get a better reference than this um i will where's the there's the info page with the isbn number so if anyone's interested in trying to find a copy there's the information you need One stop shop, pretty much for a Mark 9, anyway. And there we have it then the Airfix 124th Mark 9 new tool super kit. Um, I, for one, was surprised when they announced this. Uh, they've already got a Spitfire. Um, <laughs> you know, you I, you would think that maybe they'd have gone on to something new again, like they did with the Typhoon. I'm not going to complain, clearly. Uh, I think it looks fabulous. Uh, from this first impressions we'll see how it goes together very very soon because i will be doing it on the channel um price of this kit just under 100 pounds i expect it's going to sell through pretty quickly i expect there's probably been a lot of pre-orders as big a scale as it is it's not an excessively large model when it's built unlike say for example a 132 lancaster um <laughs> nor is it overly expensive at £95 so um, if you want one I suggest you probably pick one up fairly quickly um, is it any better than what else is out there unequivocally yes it is because the only other 24th Spitfires out there are the old Airfix one and the Hobby Boss ones the old Airfix one is actually an excellent kit but it is a little basic and the Hobby Boss one shouldn't even be considered <laughs> frankly <laughs> they're absolutely awful in accuracy terms um so that, yeah it it easily surpasses anything in the scale is it better than a tamiya 130 second spitfire probably not but it isn't much worse and it's bigger and it's cheaper so pays your money and you take your choice i'm absolutely thrilled with this really looking forward to getting on with it I th as i said i think it looks quite delicious and I think it's going to make up into a really really beautiful model I have something quite 
quite excellent in mind for this which will become clear as time moves on but for now I hope you've enjoyed this very very quick look review with all of my stutterings and 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 shaky fingered model geekeryness. <laughs> I just wanted to get it out straight away for those of you that haven't got one on pre-order and are possibly quite excited to see how it looks uh, so until next time and more Spitfire wonderfulness it only remains for me to say look after yourselves look after each other and Genesis out